Delta CX, available for CX and UX consulting, projects, and training. Contact us for a free consultation. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? I hope you're keeping cool or warm based on where you are living. Um, whoa, hold on. I've got something up. Oh, sorry, forgot to mute my own stuff. Hello. Ha <laughs> ha equipment. Um, it is July 23rd, 2020. I'm your good friend, Debbie Levitt from Delta CX, and welcome to all of you low ego action heroes joining me today for this podcast. I really hope we've got lots of uh, people at different levels listening in today because we are going to be covering such an important topic, and I'm going to get my windows ready here, and I'm also going to bring in our super special guest, who you can find on the interwebs, uh, written as Edgar Kieran Robinson, but we call him Kieran. Now, please introduce yeah. yourself. Uh, first of all, Debbie, I just want to say I appreciate you for uh, having me on the uh, podcast, and it's it's a pleasure being that uh, how we end up meeting each other. Well, I guess we'll get into that later on. But uh, my name is Kieran Robinson, or Edgar Kieran Robinson, whatever you like to call me. Uh, I am a tenure educator. I'm a designer, UX designer, graphic designer. Uh, I just like to create random things and have fun. Whatever I'm, uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever I wake up and feel like doing is, is what I like to do. But um, <laughs> you, can find me, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, as Edgar Ed Kieran Robinson. I have a t-shirt company as well called The Focus Campaign, and my personal website is called Haywa Design Co. Can and, you spell um, that? Because so this goal so. Yeah. This goes out as no. an audio only. Got you, got you. That's H E I W A Design C O dot com. And, got it. Uh, reach out to me there. And uh, you know, like I said, uh I've been in the design industry for maybe like ten years through various various things. Uh and um I first started kind of like blogging and I was living in South Korea. I was teaching, which is actually where I first started teaching about I think it was 10 years ago. And uh, I had a chance to start a blog, I had a chance to kind of get myself involved in entrepreneurship. And I uh, was starting a promotions company. And then uh, I had an opportunity to go backpacking. And after that, I came back to the States. I started teaching. A changed um, man. A changed man, never to be never the same again. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm coming to visit you in Italy as well, uh, FYI. Please, but, um, next year when it's safe. <laughs> next year, not no no time soon, unfortunately. But right now I'm residing in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, just doing some design work. I'm doing some work at a uh, boot camp, actually, as a uh, teaching assistant. I'm still teaching. I'm still doing freelance design work. So that's just a little spill about me. Love it. Love it. Good. Everybody get to know you. And for the people listening on audio only, I'm going to spell your name uh, since they can't see the screen right now. And so if you're looking for him on LinkedIn, it's uh, Edgar, E-D-G-A-R hyphen Kieron, K-E-I-R-O-N, last name Robinson, R-O-B is in Bravo, I-N-S-O-N. -N. So for those audio only folks on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify, look this guy up. And of course, quick plug, please, please remember to uh, subscribe here on the YouTube channel. It's the best way to show that you support the crazy stuff that I do many times a week here on the live stream. So subscribe to the Delta CX universe. So today's topic is how to select a mentor. And I wanted to start by throwing you the easy question. What's a mentor and what can, what do these people do? <laughs> uh, for me, uh, you know, a mentor is a person who provides guidance. Um, and it could be various types of guidance. Like uh, it can be something specific towards something you're trying to accomplish. Or it could be somebody that's trying to give you basic life guidance or spiritual guidance or whatever the case is and um you know uh i think uh a mentor can be anybody it can be a, a PE teacher it can be someone like you debbie uh you know it can be a grandfather <laughs> or a godfather you know whatever the case is so that's how i feel about uh, how to define a mentor for me 
Yeah, certainly agree. And uh, I also remind people that sometimes uh, a mentor is also a sort of coach or, or a teacher. Like we think about our piano teacher. You know, we went to a piano teacher to learn piano. We wanted an expert piano teacher. And we wanted someone who knew way more about this than we did to help guide us and, and correct us when we're wrong and show us the right right ways to do things um so so just so people know we're going to say mentor today but it could be a coach it could be a teacher a tutor an advisor your teaching assistant <laughs> this guy um and uh so when i think is what are some of the things that we could turn to a mentor for uh, i think when uh when you're looking for it, well, I think the first thing is coming to the realization that you need a mentor. And I think uh, uh, a lot of us don't even realize it, but uh, we need mentors. We can be so much further in life with a mentor, whether it be through your career or, like I said, your spirit or whatever the case is. Um, but I think um, as far as when you go into a mentor, you said what? I mean, I just want to make sure I answer your question correctly. You said what do yeah, you need what, from a mentor? Why would we go to one? What What can they do for us or with us? Oh, like, yeah. Like I said, uh, it's just a matter of like if you're in a, a career and you're looking to you see somebody that you admire, uh, maybe they're in a particular position, or you just like the way they work or like the just of how they work, um, and you strive to be similar to that person, if not the same as that person, or better than that person. Um, those are some things you should look for. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to look for negative things and mentor as a teacher, even though, you know, in society, we probably get influenced more by those things than the actual mentors that we need, you know, but, um, you know, that's how, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. And I also remind people that it's spe more specifically when we're thinking about UX and CX and people who are looking to uh, come into the career or level up. It's really important to have that expert person who can look at your work and give you feedback, be challenging, n not just a cheerleader. But, but we're going to talk about cheerleaders and challengers uh, coming right up, I know, because uh, we have a couple of show notes today. So let's jump in there and talk about what are some criteria for selecting a mentor? What should we look for? So I think, um, you know, I was listening to some examples uh, earlier, and I was uh, I heard an analogy and it was saying something to the extent of if you want to go into a heavyweight fight with Mike Tyson, you can talk to his personal coach. You can talk to his, you know, maybe uh, friends who know him to get some advice. Or you can talk to somebody who's fought him or even per perhaps someone who's already beat him. And I think a lot of times you're probably going to find, I mean, all that advice is valuable. But the thing about it is you probably want to talk to the gentleman or the guy that uh, actually got in the ring with Mike Tyson for some possible tips. So along with what you were saying earlier, you know, if you are able to find an expert in that field, uh, like I said, somebody that really knows what they're doing, has books, has podcasts, has uh, a, a variety of work, you know, out in the atmosphere or whatever, then that's something that, that you would strive to look for, I believe. Yeah, that's certainly one thing. Uh, so certainly experience in the field that you're looking to get this mentoring or, or coaching. And I always think the more experience, the better. You want to learn piano from the person who's been playing for four years, five years, 10 years, not the person who started studying piano last week. So well, the, go ahead. I was just wanting to, excuse me for interrupting, but I Please wanted interrupt to say me. that. Uh, an interesting topic about that is sometimes, uh, you know, I think that a mentor is definitely should have a lot of experience, but sometimes that experience doesn't equate to the ability to teach that particular skill. That's right. And also, you know, I believe that there have been uh, instances of excellent coaches or business teachers or whatever the case that may have never started a business or may have never played in that particular sport, but somehow they're just, you know, blessed with the gift of teaching and they can convey those messages also. So I think that's something that you have to look up. 
Yeah, you know, totally, so. totally true. So, so we were talking about you want to make sure they have experience. You want to make sure they have experience in what you want to do. So if you want to do more mm -hmm. UX research, maybe you're looking for a researcher as your mentor. Uh, I do research, but I'm a little bit more of an information architect and interaction designer. So I may or may not be a good research mentor, as an example. Um, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, because this person's going to be checking your work and trying to help you grow and level up, you really want that that expert in, in your field. Plus, you always yeah. hope that they know the people who might get you that job later. So it makes sense to, right. to go there. But let's dwell a little bit on what you were saying because when you said this to me over the private messages at one point before when we were planning this podcast i was like boom this is what this is really about which is not everybody's a great natural teacher so i know you've got a couple of ideas on different styles of mentoring and teaching tell us about those styles and how do we recognize which style someone's using um so you know i know we've talked about the uh ideating and the ideating would be someone like a uh you know, I think about like a godfather, somebody who really doesn't know a lot maybe about what you're, what you're going through, but they know a lot about life in general, so they might be able to provide some feedback. You have challengers, those are going to be your people who are going to challenge the ideas that you have, which those types of things can also be uh, valuable as well. Uh, cheerleaders, you know, I think you definitely need cheerleaders on your team, but I don't know how valuable they may be. <laughs> specifically but um and I, I wanted to talk about something that i know you talk about a lot in your podcast and about like ux juniors but i wanted to say something about reverse mentoring and uh, that's something that me and a colleague talked about yesterday whereas someone maybe younger someone maybe newer to the profession may have some different insight for somebody who's older in the profession somebody who's um may not be as connected to the current you know, what's going on in society, what's going on in the world, current design uh, tactics or techniques. So what do you feel about things of that nature? Like somebody younger coming to you and maybe being able to provide some good feedback to you. I'm always open to feedback. I mean, uh, people think I'm not because I have a bold personality and I have ideas about stuff. But but they would be surprised about things that I've I've changed about my the the way I approach things or or times I've changed my mind on things because I think we have to do that in UX. You have to have that flexibility to say I just got better information about something. I mean, I may need to change how I thought of that. So I may not change, you know, when one person says to me, well, my boot camp experience was good. That's usually not enough for me to change my overarching opinion <laughs> on boot camps. But I have had people come to me and say, hey, what about this? Or, you know, Deb, you did this and I think it could have been better in this way. I always want to hear that stuff. So I think that whether you call it reverse mentoring or just someone giving me a great mentoring or teaching moment, I think that's a good, you know, you were also talking, I know we want to get back to, we got so many topics going at the same time. I want to, <laughs> Uh, I want to talk definitely about ideator, challenger, cheerleader, educator, connector, and reverse mentor, but maybe we take a little side moment on what does it mean to be coachable? Because I want to be coachable. I have a, a life and business coach I sometimes work with. She's helped me immensely. What does it mean to be coachable? Uh, I, I know we talked about it earlier, and I think uh, one big thing about being coachable is uh like letting go of your ego, you know, and, um, and, and allowing someone to give you advice, especially if you value their advice. Now, if somebody's just talking crazy, you know, that's different. But <laughs> if, 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 you, uh, if you go out and seek this person and they offer to give you advice, being able to take it, being able to apply it, you know, and I know you made a good point of saying, like, if your coach or mentor gives you uh, five or six things to do on your portfolio or or if your football coach tells you to work on this or try these things in the weight room and come back to me, before you go back to them, you need to apply these things. You need to take time out and, and see how they work. But do you, you gotta, you have to do your work, you know? Um, even before you meet a mentor, I believe that you need to put in, you know, the necessary amount of work or at least what they tell you. Even research your mentor, you know, as well. Look them up, check out their Twitter, check out their videos. Uh, check out their books, you know, and uh, and don't ask and and don't ask repetitive questions of, of things ready to find uh, 
uh, information that's already readily available from that particular person. Yeah, like sometimes I, I have people who want to make an appointment with me so they can ask me what's a good way to use personas. And my thought is, oh, holy cats, you don't need a an injury. You don't need to book a session with me for that, paid or free. Thing one, Google yeah. it. Thing two, if you're exactly. confused by what you see in Google because there might be some different points of view perspectives, then come to my mm -hmm. Tuesday office hours and ask me when A, it's free, and B, everyone else gets the benefit of hearing the answer also. So I think that there yeah. are ways that, that you can help your mentor by being curious, by doing a little mm -hmm. digging yourself mm -hmm. and not just sitting there expecting your mentor to just spoon just feed you. Everything. you. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I, I always tell. Go about, ahead. Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I I always tell the story, same boring story of a, fa a fight I got in, in on LinkedIn in public with uh, what I think is a junior UX researcher, and I was mentioning how Don Norman is going to be working on. Uh, uh, improving UX curriculum and improving UX education. And her response was, and I'm giving her a voice, I don't know what she sounded like, these were words. <laughs> well, I don't know who this Don Norman is, and I don't know what he represents, and I don't know why we're waiting for him, so why don't you just tell me who he is? And, and I wrote back and I said, I can forgive you for not knowing who Don Norman is, but I don't forgive you for not Googling him. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have to use those thousand dollar devices that we walk around with in our pockets. <laughs> Just do a quick Google search, you know. I Who's Don agree. Norman? Uh, oh, that's who Don Norman is. Now I see yeah. why I should care about this guy exactly. saying he's going to do a thing. Okay, now I don't have to right. go back right. and bitch this woman out on LinkedIn. <laughs> I, I, I put it together myself. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so being coachable, so you talked about how we're going to have to drop some ego and especially if people are going to give you feedback and you might hear that your work could be better. Y your work needs work. Uh, you need yeah. to try it again. Uh, you know, th you, like you're always making great sports metaphors. I mean, you are in training and sure. training isn't the Super Bowl. You got to keep training. So think about your time with your mentor as training drop your ego don't be defensive i get people who come to me and they are so defensive they think if i don't like boot camps i hate them and i go whoa hold on hold on yeah, i yeah. like you i'm for you i support you but i, I yeah. kind of don't totally love this other thing that's happening over here which doesn't have to yeah. be you yeah. so so ca yeah. can you think of other things that make people more coachable? Because you've been a teacher for so many years. You've worked with a lot of students. Yeah. What, who are, what do you recognize in people that makes them more coachable and, and those kids or adults that you, you want to really embrace? I mean, I think we spoke on it, like just being able to listen and being able to, uh, or at least give it a, a chance. You know, um, a lot of kids or a lot of people in general and I think it could come down to your personality as well. And like I said, holding up like certain egos. Um, but if you're, and I, I honestly don't think everybody's going to be able to be coachable. You know, I hate to say that, but, um, and that may work for them better than maybe they're like different types of leaders or they go on to do other things. But um, I think that, uh, like I said, just being able to do the work, take the advice. And, and I can be honest for myself. I was able to um, talk to a gentleman about it. He did a portfolio review, and um, I thought my portfolio was pretty decent at the time. And uh, he told me some things, and I was like, "Man, I've been working on this, on this for six months, you know." And uh, but I had to let go of my ego and go back to the drawing board and just take some time out and say, "Well, I'm already here, you know. Um, I've got most of the stuff. I just need to make some minor revisions and things of that nature." But you know, it, it, I mean, you have to accept if you're going to talk to somebody that they possibly know more than you, you know, and obviously you want somebody that knows more than you. <laughs> yeah, one would hope. Um, so let's see, I'm going to put something up on the screen now uh, because I do portfolio reviews and I offer them for free. Uh, so if people mm -hmm. want me to do a portfolio review, I will do one for free for the entire planet. Um, there, there's a couple of catches, but mostly it's fix it before you show it to me because you don't want to <laughs> waste my time. And, um, 
and and it is private and uh, and you get one so use it wisely uh, but you can sign up for it my sister my system is going to invite you to it as if you're coming to something but you're not I do it as a video and then I send people the video later totally privately the whole thing is is private but I have to say I am definitely someone giving the tough love uh, I would say 85% of people are grateful for what I tell them about their portfolio. And they say, wow, so many people looked at it and didn't say what you said. And I think you might be right. And I would say 5% five people, five of people fight me um, and say, well, the things you didn't like, my school liked. And I go, then you keep looking for that job. Keep me posted. And about 10% yeah. of people just ghost me because they're mad that I didn't. Um, <laughs> say, say nicer things. Um, so yeah. warning there, well, let me, let me tough you. love. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I wanted to ask you about uh, what do you feel about the value of, say, a, uh, a cheerleader mentor? Mm. Um, because I feel like you're, you know, you're not a cheerleader mentor. Like, you, you're going to give it to them straight, no bullshit approach. And I feel like... You um, said it! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I just think... Uh, I think like it, I think there is value in the cheerleader approach, and I think it's even good if you have a, a team of mentors. You know what I'm saying? Somebody just pep you up, say, "Hey, man, you're doing a good job." But we need Debbie's in the world too. But how do you feel about the cheerleader? You know, it all comes down to individual style. I know that in general, a lot of people, especially when they're starting out, they kind of prefer the cheerleader because they really want to hear the support. Monique's asking, what's a cheerleader mentor? So a cheerleader mentor is when a mentor kind of has a style where they're just like, yeah, Monique, you're doing great. Keep working at it. Everything's going well. You're going to get there. And, and maybe your work's not great. Maybe your portfolio needs some help. Maybe your resume is kind of blah. Um, uh, but that cheerleader style mentor, which I see happening m a lot in boot camps, because boot camps want to make you feel good. They want to make you feel like I went through this school, I was supported, they cared about me. So they tend to be more cheerleadery and I think less um, objective and less, hey, you know, you didn't really do this as well as you could. So I think the boot camps. Especially uh, when finance get involved. Who what? I said, especially when finances get involved. Right. You're like, I paid $15,000 to these people and they think my work sucks. Well, F you, buddy. You know, and, and so I think, be, and I talked about this a little bit in episode 56, where, where there's a little bit of a horse in the race there, where the boot camp wants you to go out and plug the school and say, I had a great time. So they want you to feel supported. And... And I want to support people, but my version of supporting people is not just to go, yay, gold star, Kieran, you did it. I mean, when something <laughs> good happens, I'll be the first to say that. And I'll be the first to say, um, hey, you did it. Um, but <laughs> we got the confetti. <laughs> we got the confetti. We got to use it. But, um, but, at the, but normally I'm the person who before that is saying, you're probably not going to get to that point if we don't fix these other things. So I think if people are of the personality type where they need that cheering on, then maybe there's a cheerleader mentor and maybe there's one who's given them more of the tough love. But it's sometimes hard for them to be the same person because sometimes people perceive the non-cheerleader as you don't support me. And I absolutely support everybody I'm working with. That's why I'm working with you. But um, but I'm not going to just throw you gold stars and trophies uh, if I feel like something needs work. I'm I'm here to to teach and to to help. So that's why I'm usually less of a fan of the cheerleaders. And quickly, may I say, because then I want your opinion. In UX, you people, you've heard me say this before, episode 37. So you want to work in UX? UX can be a really thankless job. We get into a lot of conflicts at work and we are sometimes blamed for stuff we didn't do. We are sometimes not given credit for good stuff we did. If you are someone who needs a lot of cheerleading, this may Why not be the right, this may not be the right job for you because it can, not always, but it can be 
pretty thankless with a lot of conflict with no gold stars. I remember I worked for two years at Macy's and everyone around me was getting certificates and awards and gold stars and I got none, not because I sucked, but because they didn't give them to contractors. They only gave them to full-time employees. I don't give a crap. <laughs> I don't need a wall of certificates or a gold star or free lunch or whatever or happy hour party in my name. But if that's you, you may not get that. It's, it's a job that can be pretty tough. And if you really need that rah-rah cheerleader stuff, I just got to warn people there. What do you think about the cheerleader mentor? Well, I think it comes down to a, uh, as a teacher or a UX designer, uh, it's kind of like my job to read people and, and to kind of like know what they need or know what works best. And I have to have empathy for each person and kind of tell about you know, each situation or where they're coming from. or So I think for me, um, I think it has to be a combination of skills. Like, uh, like let's say I have a student who needs a certain type of feedback to be able to like, if, if I give somebody, let's say the Debbie approach and they're very sensitive or they're very, whatever the case is, they're gonna automatically break down and I'm not gonna be able to convey whatever I'm trying to, you know, mentor them about. But if I know that they're a sensitive person or if I know that they need a, a little, you know, pat on the back, or whatever the case is, then maybe I can um, I can change my mentor style according to the mentee, you know. And I, I know that's not the actual job. Like maybe the mentor shouldn't have to do that unless they're a full-time mentor. Um, but if you know, you know, I mean, you got to kind of read the personality of the, of the person that you're uh, the mentee as well. And so, you know, I just think I just think it's a combination. Uh, as far as effectiveness, the cheerleading approach may be uh, effective on an emotional level. But if we're talking about, you know, we're doing work and we got to get, you know, I'm trying to get you to the next level. I don't think it's going to be that effective person. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I remember having a te since your sports. I remember having a tennis coach in high school where everything I did, he hated. You know, I, I learned I learned a more professional serve and he came over to me and he said, none of that fancy stuff. And, uh, you know, so I didn't get a cheerleader, but I ignored him anyway. And I did I I, I used whatever tools I could to play to play my tennis game. And when he would just come by and go, rah, 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 I just tuned him out. <laughs> and so you yeah. have to make sure somebody's giving you actionable feedback. But I wrote down your point because I thought it was really good. And, and I think reading people is a really important ability for UX work in general. We've got yeah. to read our coworkers. We've got to read the customers when we're talking to them or observing them. And of course, mentors and, and mentees have to read each other and, and be trying to understand what does this person need right now. And if you're not sure, you have to ask, hey, Kieran, we're having a session this week. What do you need from me right now? What can we work on that's going to help you the most? And, uh, and I think what you said is really important. And I read an article the other day, I want to throw this in too, that talked about the difference. I don't think it was between good and bad mentor, but I think we can pretzel that article into being relevant to what we're saying. And they talked yeah. about how like a good mentor is someone who says, um, like, let's say you're asking me, hey, Deb, should I apply for this job or should I move more into UX research? Now, a crappy mentor takes the approach of what happened to me. Well, I don't do a lot of research, so maybe you shouldn't do so much research. Or I don't do this, so you don't do this. Or this worked for me, so you do this. They made it sound like that's crappy leadership because it's ego focused. It's about what I've done, what I've been through. And, really, and they said that the better leadership or mentoring, whatever it was, the right answer to that question is the question. Like kind of what do you need right now? Where do you want to be focused right now? What are your goals? What are your goals? Like well, you know, how will this get you towards that goal? Or is this a different goal or something else? Yay, Vicky's here. She says, hi, Debbie and Edgar. Um, 
Yay. Hi, everybody. We got a few hellos. Um, and guys, this is live. If you have questions, ask them. And we've got one from Hitesh in South Africa. Um, and that will actually bring us into something we we're going to talk about anyway. So thanks for the segue. Hello. Hitesh asks, how do you find a good mentor? I'll start with you and then I'll throw in some stuff. Where do we find these people? Uh, well, Post pre, uh, during the pandemic, it's going to be a little bit more difficult finding a mentor than it has ever been before. Right. And I uh, mean, we're talking about uh, earlier, um, you know, when I moved back to Atlanta, um, I was going to like several meetups. You know, I'm trying to talk to these designers, senior designers before I even had any credentials or a portfolio. And I'm seeking mentorship and, uh, you know, things like that. And, um, you know, it was it was hit or miss, to be honest. But now, um, what you really have to do, like Debbie said, you have to ask. You have to go out, utilize LinkedIn. Um, I actually found a mentor from a friend. I, talk, I, had, I hadn't spoke to a friend in about seven or eight years. And I kind of expressed to her what I was doing with my life, and she kind of told me what she was doing. And the next thing I knew, she actually sent me a uh, LinkedIn invite from another, another guy who was actually looking to be a mentor. And so, you know, it's just different things like that, going out, expressing to people, telling them what you need. Um, in addition to that, use Google. <laughs> like, you know, any of your resources that you have, go through your phone, see who you know, see who does what. Um, a lot of times you have the, inf the information right in your phone and you don't even realize it. Um, so I know it's a lot of, uh, I think we, you put something about ADP, uh, Lists, yeah, I'd written thought. down notes. There's a couple of online mentor lists. I don't have all of them. There's a bunch of them, but there's ADP list, which is like awesome design people or something like that. ADPlist.org and UXStars.com. I think they both have mentor lists. Um, but mostly my advice on finding a mentor or a coach or whatever it is, is pick somebody you like and trust and just say, hey, do you ever mentor people? Um, Jennifer Mitchell is here. She's commenting, I see two mentors right here. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> you. I agree. Um, and Hitesh says, can I like cold call people? Like on LinkedIn, I admire and ask them for, men for mentorship? Sort of, Hitesh. Here's what I suggest. Oh, do you want to answer that one first? I'll, I can just go from my experience. And, uh, and I know Debbie's going to have some good info because we've talked about, about this before but um you know my whole thing is i wouldn't recommend cold calling anybody uh, now it can be a possible like a uh anything is possible you have a 50 50 chance of them picking up and telling you hey i would love to do that but i believe nine times out of ten they probably won't i think a lot of things that i'm doing right now i try to do is provide content i try to show people what i'm doing i try to uh engage in in different forums uh, the way that me and Debbie even met was through a, uh, you know, it was comment on comments post on and a post. Kinda, and, and 14 or 15 comments later, you know, we started messaging <laughs> each other. And two days after that, after messaging, we, we finally decided that we were going to be, uh, she's going to allow me to be on her podcast, which I greatly appreciate. And no, <laughs> please, I'm blushing. The honor is mine. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, I think just, just providing content and, and going out and not being afraid and add somebody on the end of it. Um, you have to do things like this and get innovative these days. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot more difficult than just cold calling somebody or just emailing anybody like it used to be or perhaps it used to be. Yeah, and I think that um, if you are going to contact someone, cold call them, cold email them, cold LinkedIn message them, cold tweet them, whatever it is. Make sure you have a goal in mind because when we talk about being coachable, if someone says, hey, can you mentor me? Well, I don't know. What are you trying to do? How close are you to that? What's your problems? How much time are you looking for from me? I don't know if you need five hours a week because you're on fire or if you really just want to check in from time to time. So see if you can tell that person, here's the goal I'm trying to reach and here's where I think I am on that path. You know, I would love if you were someone who could mentor me on that path. And this is what I was hoping 
you might do. Because then I have some clue, because believe me, I get these kinds of messages all the time from people who just expect me to give them all my time for free. And they're kind of yeah. like, um, hey, can you mentor me? Hey, I need a mentor. Tell me more. <laughs> you know, that's like saying, hey, I want to learn a sport. What sport? <laughs> In what way? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah I want to learn to sing. What style? Uh, you know, uh, why? Sure. Um, Hitesh says, I feel like it should be old-fashioned. You kind of meet them and have that chemistry, like Kieran says. Yeah, and so I think it would go a, a much longer way, even if you're messaging me, to say, hey, Deb, it looks like you're strong at this. I think I might be weak in that area. Here's the goal. Here, here's the goal I'm shooting for. Could you be someone who could mentor me? And Jennifer Mitchell says, yeah, be really clear about your needs and what you're asking for. So I think don't be afraid to ask someone, but also notice, I mean, I get how many messages a day between the Slack channel, YouTube comments, email, LinkedIn, and, and I'm not even that famous. Um, you know, I'm, I'm medium level. And so, you know, there, there are people with way more followers and, and, and uh, networks than, than mine, way bigger networks. So, and I'm getting a lot of stuff. So make sure it's really directed. It helps you look more coachable and more organized. And like, you're not just asking me to fix your life. You know, hey, Deb, fix my life. Sure. What's going this on here? Great. I just want to say that uh, this is that's very good feedback that you're giving because you know um, a lot of people um, simply honestly don't know about getting mentors. Like if you didn't grow up in an environment where a mentor was a thing, or that you were, uh, you knew about mentors, or you know we're going to segment it to kind of something we were discussing earlier. But um, you know, I wanted to talk about like various communities uh, a lack of exposure due to environmental conditions or whatever the case is and you simply not even knowing about mentors I, a mentor is not even a, a in your vocabulary to be honest um and you know just how how does one go from not even knowing about a mentor to possibly going out and seeking a mentor uh, would you have any advice on that yeah, I mean, obviously, in some of our uh, underrepresented uh, communities and groups, I think a lot of people feel like they are just in a downward spiral, like they don't know the people, so they don't have the network. So how are they going to get to the place? And and I get it. And and I feel you. And I think that's why it's OK to find the YouTuber, to find the author, to find the speaker, to find the a person whose posts you like and just reach out to them. I would not be offended by someone writing to me and saying, here's what I'm looking for. Do you think you could mentor me? Or, hey, I wish I could talk to you two hours a month. Is that time that you might be able to give me for free? And then I have to judge. Okay, do I have time for that in the scheme of, of my world? So I want to quickly mention, because we got a, a question from the room, we got Jessica Burney in the, in the YouTube chat who said, how much should you pay a mentor for their time? And I want to cover that quickly while we continue answering your question. So I have found in general, general that when people use the word mentor they imagine that they're getting this for free and that when people mm -hmm. use the word coach they imagine they are paying for this so i i believe both people are helping you or should help you the same way uh not everybody is going to be able to give you endless time for free um i know unfortunately i can't i have to do things that also make me money and uh, I can't just give people 40 hours a week for free. I do sometimes have people who just find my online calendar and put time in it. And then I, I get into this call and I'm like, what's up? And they're like, can you explain personas to me? And then I'm like, oh, that, that just went down badly. You know, so you could have Googled that and then asked me a much shorter question. So, so I think it's important. So what, so what do people charge? When I do mentoring, I charge $50 for an American, 50 American dollars for a half hour. If you want a half hour, it's $50. If you want an hour, it's a hundred dollars. I do give people a little bit of free time. Right now I offer everybody one coaching session for free to see if I can help you or if there's something cooking, I'll put that, um, I'll put that link up on the screen right now. 
um, where you can, um, it says 15 minute free time. And I, if I have the time, I give people a half hour. Um, let me put that, let me spell it correctly and put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. Um, there we go. I think that will take you there. So you can book the 15 minute free coaching time with me, but I ask people, please use it wisely because I get so many people saying, can you look at my portfolio? And I go, well, man, that takes me, that takes me a long time. Sign up for my portfolio review. You know, yeah. hey, can you look at my, well, sign up for my portfolio review. Hey, can I ask you, when is it good to use personas? Come to my Tuesday office hours. Ask that for free. Don't, yeah. don't block time out of, of my yeah. attempt, uh, my day that attempts to make some money. You know, so, so be respectful <laughs> of my time. And just remember, there are some questions you have that are easily asked for free in my every Tuesday office hours where I stream live here and I take questions for an hour and it's a good place to ask your question because chances are other people have the same question yeah. i know i'm going on and on but um but let's go back to the underrepresented communities and so jessica what should you pay for a, a mentor for their time ask them what they're charging that's what they've decided their value is you uh, you probably can't negotiate with a mentor you probably can't say 50 deb i think you're worth 37 and i'm like <laughs> what just happened here so you probably can't negotiate but depending upon what's going on for you i think it's for me, it would be okay if someone said, can I get a payment plan or can I get time to pay that? I understand these are tough times right now. I don't want to have to sue you later. I normally don't like to delay payments on things, but if it really is hard for people to come up with that $50, somehow they've got 15000 for General Assembly, but when I want 50 it's not there. <laughs> so... Um, so I think that you probably can't negotiate with a mentor, but especially if you're going to be working with them and they maybe can put together a package for you, see if they can delay payment a little bit or give you some sort of payment plan um, that would help you spread things out. I, you know, I don't want to tell people to burn their credit cards. I don't want to tell them to take out a loan, but y'all are doing that on boot camps anyway. So, you know, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what to tell you. I, I would feel too guilty. So, Hopefully that helps, Jessica. And let's get back to those underrepresented communities. Do those people know that they can ask for mentoring? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just being in one of those underrepresented communities, I think, uh, you know, growing up, I did have uh, I had football coaches, I, you know, sports coaches, you know, my aunts or just older people around me. But uh, specifically somebody that wanted to take me under their wing and, you know, mold me or help me get to certain goals or whatever. It was very hard. Like I said, I honestly didn't know anything about mentors until later on in life. And uh, what's crazy is I, I called my aunt the other day. My aunt's about 12 years older than me. I'm not going to tell her age or my age. But um, <laughs> I'm 48. She, she's, she's around your age. And so I called her and she says, uh, on, let me call you back. I'm on the phone with my mentor. And it was interesting because one, I didn't even know she had a mentor. And um, and two, it was like, it doesn't matter what age, or, and she's doing pretty well. She's a, a patent attorney and everything, but it was like, no matter what age she's at, she's still a, a level, you know, you still can use mentorship. But for those underrepresented communities, I think that we need to do a better job at telling them like, hey, mentors are available. Uh, we need to reach out to them a lot of times if, they may not know things, so we need to provide more content. Tell them, hey, there are resources available. Since COVID has been going on, I've been seeing a lot of uh, posts about uh, mental health, mentorship, uh, you know, free portfolio readings, all types of things that weren't I didn't see before. And I think that these things need to be in place year round for underrepresented communities or people who just just don't have exposure to these. Yeah, I've been doing the free portfolio thing since December, and, and I know it didn't totally get around, and I don't know, I can just blame the LinkedIn algorithm for not showing it to more people. <laughs> um, but Hitesh has a follow-up question, and he's wondering, um, this was going to be for both of us, any black or brown UX mentors that you or Kieran can recommend? It's not going to uh, be me then. So who do... <laughs> 
do I recommend? And I'm trying to think of who do I know that, yeah, that yeah, does yeah, mentoring because yeah. there, there are plenty of awesome black and brown people yeah. out there, but I don't know who does mentoring, so I don't want to start naming them and then you flood their email box and they're like, what is this yeah. crap? If, if he can uh, reach out, he, uh, he or she, I don't, I don't, I'm not quite sure. I think it's he. Let me look at the they, picture. Okay. It looks if they like can reach out to me, if they can reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, then I'll, I can send them some links of people or lists that I've seen. I can't name any, you know, uh, right off the top of my head, to be honest. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm, that's one thing I feel like what I've seen in the black and brown communities is that we want to be able to reach out to certain people and, and want to be able to help each other out. Um, it's a, it's a real need, you know, to be represented. So I think that, uh, we're willing to take time out also, but the things that we have to consider are, a lot of mentors are trying to make it themselves or they're trying to figure it out as they go. So we have, like you said, that you got to be respectful of their time and just be prepared when you're going to talk to them and be have a specific objective because, uh, you know, they work hard to get to where they are. And that's the thing, uh, like your time should be uh, respected, you know. Yeah, and everybody hopefully is going to meet my life and business coach. She's going to be joining us on September 10th, and she's going to be doing a podcast okay. with me on finding your life purpose. Because uh, I get so many mm. people saying to me, like, should I go into UX? And I go, well, do you know your life purpose, and does it fit in with that? <laughs> so um, uh, Hitesh says, I'm a brown UXer from South Africa. And, and let me add to that, that I know some people who are black or brown might prefer a black or brown mentor, but there's plenty of people who are not black or brown who would absolutely love to mentor all, all everybody. I mean, I am certainly yeah. not looking at someone and going, oh, what skin tone are they? Or what's their gender expression? Or what's their religion? I, I can't speak for other people, but uh, let's just let's just say it out loud. I'm a bit of a liberal person, so I welcome everybody into my world. You're all low ego action heroes in the Delta CX community. And I am not I am not caring about uh, uh, those things, but I also know that sometimes people have a preference. It's okay to have a preference, and it's okay to come to people who look like you or don't look like you and reach out. So, uh, like I said, find the people that you admire, whoever you admire. Yeah. And I reach out to people I admire. Like, I'm a super fan of Larry Marine. Um, he's an old-time UX guy who is still active and, and does amazing work and has the best track record in, on the planet. And I, I turned to him on stuff. And, and so, um, you know, e even the mentors have mentors, you know, there's always the, the therapist has a yeah, therapist. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, it, 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 you know, it's, it's a, you got to have be open to continuous learning. That's a personality right. trait that not everybody has. Some people, and, and it kind of goes back to ego feeling like, well, I learned it, I'm done. But uh, there's always more ways to learn, more better techniques, and you have to be open to it. Right. So, yeah, you can always reach out to us, certainly. We've got a few more minutes. We're happy to take some questions. Let's see if there's anything in our notes we were going to cover that we forgot. Um, let me see. I definitely wanted to say, um, comment on something that you uh, just said. And uh, Yeah. First of all, uh, shout out to my, my, I think it's a guy, it's a gentleman from South Africa that's asking all the questions. Yeah, Hitesh. Hitesh, yeah, shout out to South Africa also. I got a lot of good South African friends. <laughs> but what I wanted to say about that was um, I, I, I like the fact that you said that there are, um, it doesn't have to be a black or brown uh, mentor if you're black or brown. Now, I think that there can be certain advantages of being able to, you know, relate culturally and things of that nature. But the thing about it is um, if somebody's willing to give you help, you know, uh, Take the help, you know. Uh, now, if you see that it doesn't work, then, you know, you can always choose to go a different route or whatever. But if somebody's actually trying to help you and they're trying, they're taking time out of their day, um, just go for it. Um, you know, so I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say discriminate against a particular race because they're, you know, for looking for help. Or, and I think that in the design community, we have to do a better job of, of not, uh, I don't want to say discriminating, but um, not trying to keep not trying to keep the profession so tight 
that we don't want to let outsiders in or we don't want to let younger people in or we don't want to mentor people because, you know, you want to stay with at the senior position or you're scared of your position being taken. I think that the U.S. community has to do a better job with that. Me personally, you know. Um, and I'm seeing that re- more recently than ever. Yeah, we covered a little bit of that when we did a podcast on why are there so why is there so much conflict between juniors and seniors, and mm-hmm. we found some of you know some of, oh uh, Jennifer Mitchell posted a link to a group called Blacks Who Design, and it's Blacks Who dot Design. Let me um, type that one into my box and slide it over on the screen. Let's see. I haven't been to this site, so I I can't say if it's good or bad, but it certainly sounds good. <laughs> so let's uh, take a look. Blacks Blacks Who Design looks like this. Blacks Who Dot Design. Um, so I haven't checked that out, but check it out. See if it's a match to you. Um, so yeah, obviously. Uh, one great thing that can come out of mentoring is for more people to be exposed to more people, more people at different mm-hmm. levels. And I, you guys know from my podcasts, I strongly believe we have to create more opportunities for people to get jobs in UX, that it doesn't make sense for, for companies to have said that entry-level jobs require a year of experience. The whole point of an entry-level yeah. job is you haven't had experience yet. But, but I know, so I know that that's a whole snake eating tail problem that we haven't solved yet. Um, But I know that seniors should not be threatened by juniors. Seniors should welcome juniors. And I especially believe that where we can find the juniors with the great talent and the great personalities, even if you haven't learned shit yet, if you have some (laughs) good natural talent and you've got uh, you've got those right personality pieces, the low ego, the coachable, uh, good at problem solving, resilience. We talked about them in the 10 traits every UX practitioner should have. Even if somebody doesn't know facts yet, even if they don't know some of the technique yet, when we see the people who have the raw talent and the great personality, we've got to lift those people up. And and that's not going to be everybody. Not everybody should be in UX because some people go, oh, well, that's elitist. Well, next Thursday we're doing Is UX Elitist? So catch us next Thursday (laughs) for for that one with special guests Darren Hood and Dr. Nick Fine. But it's not that we're elitist, but I think it's okay to have standards. And right now there aren't a lot of standards because boot camps didn't have standards. Boot camps let everybody in, whether or not you had the good personality, whether or not you showed any raw talent for any of this stuff. They said, what, you're breathing and you can pay for this? Come on in. And the problem is that your employer, your potential employer has standards. So I don't want people to feel like we're elitist or we're threatened by you or we don't want you in in the world. We do because you in five years are our seniors. And we want th- we want those seniors to be strong and knowledgeable and great personalities and teachers and leaders. So we've got we've got to find the great people now and raise them up and some of the people who don't belong. And I want to tell a quick mentor story here. So I'm talking your heads off. Promised. Yeah, uh, so when I was going through university, I was I wanted to be a genetic researcher. And every summer I worked in a hospital for almost no money just to have exposure to working in a lab that was doing research. So I I worked at a local hospital that did research and I worked in the lab all summer long when everyone went to the beach. I was in a lab and wearing a lab coat and everything. And, um, and, And I think my third summer doing this, there was a new doctor in the department and he was super cool and he knew I was into interesting music and he would bring me weird CDs of Greek disco and Mori Kante, the, the amazing, amazing African musician. And one day after some weeks of hanging out, the doctor says to me, you don't want to be a genetic researcher. And I was like, mm. say what? Of course I do. It's been my <laughs> life goal. My entire life yeah. leads up to this moment. 
And he goes, yeah. okay, but you're going to have to go through medical school. This is what medical school is like. You're going to have to do this. This is what that's like. You're going to have to write grants all the time, begging for money to do your research. Here's what that's like. And he started laying out the realities of what the career looked like. Because I had in my mind, like, I sit in the lab, I look at a microscope, I cure diabetes. And, <laughs> and he was Bye. like, let me... Yeah, he was like, let me tell you what this really looks like and how to get there. He's like, and I don't think you want that path. And mm. that took a couple of months to sink in because I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to yeah. hear you're not going to do the thing you've been dreaming of. But I'm grateful to that man every day because if he hadn't said something, yeah. I probably would have tried to go to medical school or tried to yeah. do something. You, I wouldn't necessarily be here today. I would have followed a path that probably would not have set my heart on happy fire the way that UX and CX does. And I think if someone says to you or you find out on your own that UX work isn't a match to you, don't take it as a defeat. It Don't take it as a defeat. It just means that your path is going in another direction and you're going to find something that you love even more. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, that's a great example of uh, a mentor who really cares about your end goal, you know, a lot of mentors only care about how what you can do or them putting on their LinkedIn that they mentor X amount of people or whatever the case is. But that, that seems like a true, like almost like a great coach or whatever the case is. They're going to tell you what's best for you instead of telling you what you want to hear, you know. So that, that was That's actually, the non I wouldn't be talking to what it wasn't for him. <laughs> Right. And and look at all the things that have come from that. And the, the thing that bugs me the most is I can't remember his name because it was like 1991 and I've unfortunately forgotten his name. But uh, I remember he was Polish and he was hilarious and he always wore a bow tie. But um, because uh, I worked in the Department of Allergy, Rheumatology and Clinical Immunology. I worked on Lyme disease. Um, but I just want to remind people that sometimes that mentor is going to give you that message that's tough and you can push harder and maybe you push through or you can say there's a message in there for me and so um i i that's why i that's why i think ux isn't going to be for everybody just this way that genetic research isn't going to be for everybody just the way that being a school teacher or sports coach isn't going to be for everybody and as you reminded us not everybody even makes a great teacher you said that at the beginning not everybody is a great teacher not everybody is a great ux designer yeah i agree, I agree. but we got to find the ones with the potential and raise them up so that that's now, what I want to see. How more. much of how much of a responsibility do you put on the mentor in uh, figuring out like if somebody is actually I'm not gonna say worth mentoring or coachable or you know I think um, like I said we have to do a better uh, well you don't have to but if you would like to be a mentor you need to do a better job going out and seeking potential seeking potential people who have you know these characteristics or attributes that you're looking for. Yeah, um, I'll tell a little story about that. So a few weeks ago, um, I had put something on LinkedIn that said, I really want to mentor more black people, like, can, or at least have a free coaching session with more black people. Like, can I please meet more people, talk to people, see what they need, see if there's a connection. Hello, book some time with me. And someone who had mentoring with me knew someone else who she'd been mentoring. And she said, okay, these two people now have to meet. And I got to meet someone and she starts telling me her story because it's like, hey, UX, what are you doing? Why do you want to do it? Where are you going with this? And this would be, I think, her second career, at least. She was previously a social worker, so licensed social worker, you know, did school for that. And what I started as she's talking about herself and why she got into UX and what she's doing and, and coming from social work and all that. I pretty much just started crying and I was like, this is one of the most beautiful people that I've met in a long time. And this person is so right for our industry. She has the intelligence. She has the problem solving drive. She has the low ego. She used to be a social worker. She cares yeah. about people. She, she puts their needs ahead. She's 
so smart and and oh my and such and she's asking questions not throwing her ego around i just started crying and i said can i please mentor you for free for the rest of my life mm -hmm. that's beautiful yeah and that's and, how i think it should <laughs> Nope, and I wish I could say that to I'm going to cry. I wish I could say that to more people. Um, but, you know, yeah. thing one, I haven't met more people. I've only met limited number of people. And thing two, people come to me with lots of good questions, and I'm happy to help them and answer their questions. But once in a while, somebody gets to me in a way where I say, yeah. I want to make sure this person succeeds. And, and I know this will sound a little biased, but another person is my boyfriend. Um, mm -hmm. My boyfriend has a background in kitchen and home design and making WordPress websites. And I started throwing some UX work at him even before he had taken any courses. Like, honey, just make some, make, what would you do with this? Make something. Yeah. And he built me an Axure prototype. And the first thing I said was, honey, where'd you learn Axure? And he goes, yeah. He goes, from overhearing you on the phone teaching it to people. Wow. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna cry now. And and then, yeah. you know, when I and then I saw his work, and again, this is a guy who hadn't taken a course yet. He was just going by by gut and feel, and his work was mm -hmm. not perfect, but his work was really beautiful. And it was yeah. like oh, this is somebody I have to coach and I have to get them to that level because they're just going to be, they're going to be amazing at this. And especially the other person I'm mentoring, who I told the story about, she's going to change the world. My boyfriend's awesome, honey, I love you, but she, that woman's <laughs> going to change the world. That woman's going to change the world. Yeah. And that's, and that's yeah. Adis. If you don't know Adis, get to know Adis. So... She's going to change the world and we all have to, we have to find those people. You, you are going to change the world. You are making a uh, difference in people's lives all the time. We've got to get, we've got to raise you up. Like, you know, it's hard to say, oh, that guy over there, I don't want to raise him up. Uh, that's really hard. I don't want to say that. That's like being the shitty judge on American Idol. But, <laughs> but I know that I can't, I can't split my time 9,000 ways. And so, but if everybody who was me or like me or, or somewhere in my vicinity picked a handful of people and said, I'm going to raise that handful of people up, like that would be, we would, the world would be totally different in an instant. If we all, if each of, if, if me and, and Darren and Joel and all the people who were already doing some mentoring said, these five people, I'm going to m do my best to personally make sure they succeed. Correct. And I, and I think it can be done from uh, whatever level you're at also. You know, you don't have to be a senior designer or you don't have to be a, a mid-level designer or whatever the case is. I think you can find somebody and everybody can find somebody in their life that needs somebody to mentor them in some particular way, you know. And uh, like I said, I really appreciate you for, you know, taking the time out to, to even offer that type of work, you know. And But I wanted to ask you, when you hear those stories like that, um, and then you get somebody totally from a different environment, maybe, uh, I, I don't want to just, just come up with any random persona, but that you know uh, may not need the help as much as they do, but they're willing to pay. How do you go about differentiating or how do you go about splitting your time or, or your passion or, or what you really care about? I saw I'm you're supposed to be talking. I feel like I'm interviewing you now. That's fine. Uh, now it's the interview dev yeah. thing. And we're also kind of out of time. So if anybody has last okay. questions, get them in the chat and we'll talk about this and, and give us your last questions. And then we're going to have to wrap it up, even though this could obviously go on forever. So so was your question, how do I decide who gets my time? Yeah, it's just like when you really feel like somebody deserves it or you really want somebody to have it versus someone who just has access to plenty of money or whatever the case is and they needed a, a boost like what do you decide like how do you morally or i guess it depends on how much money you might need as well i mean again to me it's all about people's goals there, there are people who have paid fifty dollars and had a half hour with me and said wow you really helped me with a bunch of things and i said great if you need me again book book the time there are people who've booked an hour with me spent a hundred dollars and i said you know, if you want more time, book it. So I, I think that it really depends on what people 
people want. It doesn't have to be a two thousand dollar adventure. It can be again if somebody checked if somebody wanted to talk to me half an hour a week and there's four weeks in a month, that's two hundred dollars. Now there may be yeah. cheap people cheaper than me, and there may be people you can find to do it for free. That's cool too. I know people who charge twice what I do. Maybe they're better. So it's going to be all different levels, but not everybody necessarily needs 10 hours a week of mentoring, depending upon what you're doing or where you're trying to grow. And that's another thing to talk to your mentor about and why I do the, the, free, the free call at first is, tell me, what do you need? Tell me what your goals are. Let's come up with a plan. Maybe I think we should be on some sort of recurring thing. Maybe it's more of an as needed thing. But I think a, a fair mentor isn't gonna try to sell you on automatically sell you on a giant package. I think a fair yeah. mentor could say, hey, this sounds like you might need a half hour every other week for two months until you get to that point and then we'll look at it again. So I, I think yeah. that it's okay, go with, the mentor has to take a look at what your goal is and then figure out the plan because you might not know how to get there. It's my job to know how to get there. Yeah, it, in a way it is. And so it's like, well, that's our goal. How are we going to get there? Well, and, and so some people will say like, hey, Deb, I want to do a sample project. And I say, good, you know, whether it's a sample project, it's volunteer work, it's um, pro bono work or whatever, get that mentor or coach. Because if you start doing freelance work, volunteer work, pro bono work, and your work sucks or your work <laughs> is flawed or you didn't totally understand what you were taught and now you're applying it wrong that's bad for you that's bad for the people who hired you that's bad for our industry because we look incompetent so yeah. if so i keep hearing oh i'm just gonna freelance oh i'm gonna do free work guess what people who hire freelancers or even people for free expect awesome work and right. if you're not at that level yet where you can do awesome work on your own or you're not sure if it's awesome that's where you need that mentor or coach because that's going to be a pseudo apprenticeship. You're doing real work and I'm overseeing it and saying, hey, before your client sees that, let's do a couple of rounds of changes. Yeah. Now you look better to the client, you've done better work, it's going to be better piece for your portfolio and you understand the material better. I've, I've taught you to fish instead of handed you a fish. <laughs> that's right. Well, we are over time. I, I hope well, this has been helpful and fun. It certainly was for me. Kieran, thank you so much for joining. Let's remind people again, yeah, they yeah. can find you on LinkedIn. They can find you on your, yeah. your website. Do you, are, are you a tweeting guy? I'm not a tweeting guy. I'm just a uh, LinkedIn, a occasional Instagram guy. But uh, find me at LinkedIn, like I said, haywiredesignco.com. Uh, and uh, the focus campaign.com is my uh, apparel, my clothing apparel line. So you guys just find me there. And Debbie, I just want to say once again, it was very organic and natural how we ended up meeting. It was beautiful. Uh, like I said, I'm coming to visit you soon, and I appreciate you for having me on my podcast. Yes, please. Thank you so much You're for right. joining. Yes, it's our podcast today. And uh, and uh, obviously, once it's safe to travel, I hope you will come and let us host you here and drive your butt around and, and uh, fill you with delicious food. Some of that good food. Exactly. exactly. It's all, uh, right here, it's all about the pork and the cheese and the wine and the <laughs> pasta and the pizza. And did I mention the pork and the cheese? So... Um, um. Thanks to everybody who joined or is watching later. As always, won't you please subscribe on YouTube? It's the best way for you to support what I'm doing. Subscribe and ring that bell. You can also join the Slack channel, deltacx.link slash join Slack. We've got over 200 people in the Slack workspace now, and you can often find me there. No, I'm not a bot. It really is me. Um, if I'm awake, I'm happy to answer questions uh, pretty quickly. And other than that, let's see, today is Thursday. It's the end of the week. Quick show notes for next week so you guys uh, can mark your calendars for some of the coming topics. Let's see what we're doing. Monday, mm, Monday is a panel of four people who will be talking about what you need to be a UX junior. So it's going to be four different opinions plus me. Expect collisions. Uh, Tuesday, of course, is office hours. Ask me anything. Come 
ask me anything. Uh, Thursday the 30th is going to be Is UX Elitist with Darren Hood and Dr. Nick Fine. Hey, Orit, um, you're late, but you're here. Um, let's see, <coughs> then the first week of August, Monday the 3rd, uh, the pros and cons of empathic design, Tuesday office hours, Wednesday, silly thing, and Thursday the 6th, mark your calendar, we're going to do a live brainstorm of how should we train HR recruiters and hiring managers to hire our bots, because they are doing a bad job, in some cases, not all. So, mark your calendars, always 6.30 p.m. Italy time, so adjust that for where you are. And again, on that note, thanks again to Kieran for joining, and of course, thanks for everybody in the chat room for bringing this to life. Kieran, thanks. See everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching. Delta CX is available for consulting and projects related to CX and UX strategy, leadership, training, problem finding, problem solving, and innovation. Learn more at deltacx.com.